what's up? This is Ray. Welcome back. Hey, we got a, a unique episode today. I'm going back to my roots. I'm going to be doing more videos on analog and film in the upcoming future. And I guess this is probably going to be the most technical one. We're looking at infrared film today. I've been wanting to make this video for months. Couldn't find the time. Today's the day. <laughs> so why would anyone want to shoot infrared um, film? Different wavelengths of light behave differently. They look differently and some wavelengths we can't see like ultraviolet and infrared. Uh, so if we use the right uh, tools to see it, we're going to see um, an otherworldly kind of look that we would never know was there in the first place. Um, but it's kind of technical. So in this episode, I'm going to show you the, the tools, the film, the camera, the filters, the techniques, even how to focus it. You focus it slightly different than a regular image. So. Um, by watching this video, you're going to save yourself a lot of trial and error and stuff. Uh, I'll be the guinea pig. <laughs> so uh, you should be able to hit the ground running after we check this out. Yeah, so stick around. We're going to be checking out infrared film, Ilford SFX in medium format. Let's get it on. Okay, so before we get started with the technicalities on how to do infrared, I want to show you some images, kind of whet your appetite and show you why it's worth the effort. Um, look at this image here. Look at this image of the church I took. Um, look at look at the palm trees. Notice how dark the sky is, um, and how the the building is has a glow to it, almost like light is coming from the inside of the building out. Um, the image has a look to it that you can't explain in words, doesn't it? That's the thing about shooting um, infrared. Um, you either like it or you don't, but if you like it, you can come up with some really cool images and look, you, if you notice how the palm trees are kind of blurry near the top, when you shoot infrared, you have to shoot like a, a one second exposure. This was one second. So anything that's moving will have that motion to it. That's something I don't necessarily like because sometimes I want to have things sharp as possible, but that's just one of the characteristics of it. So. Yeah, um, that's one image I wanted to show you that gives you an idea of what we can get with it. Okay, so the most important feature your camera needs to have is to be able to do long exposures. Um, most of the shots that you see me take are one second exposures at usually F8. Um, so it's important that your camera is able to do that. Most cameras have a one second exposure on their timer anyway. That's not a problem, but if it's an overcast day or a darker day, you may need a 15 or 30 second exposure, who knows? So in that case, you'll be using a cable release where you activate the shutter and release it when it's done. Uh, that's how I do it. My particular camera has an electronically timed shutter. It has a maximum of eight seconds. So I can set, set it, let go, and it'll do the time for me. So if you have a camera that can do that, it's even better. But um, uh, there's nothing wrong with using a cable release. It's good practice also. Um, so keeping in mind how dark the uh, filter is, that's why you will need such longer exposures. But uh, that's just part of infrared. So check this out. There's not a ton of options for infrared film. Um, this particular one we're using is Ilford SFX. They call it near infrared. What that means is it's it's sensitive to some vis it's sensitive to visible light and infrared. So if I took off this infrared filter and shot this film normally, it would look perfectly normal. But apparently they put infrared particles in there. That way you could use it with infrared also. Um, Roly makes an infrared film and I'm going to put put up here which other companies make it. But um, again, it is near infrared, um, so it's going to look kind of more natural. Um, but there are films that are full infrared that it's going to look really full blown, all white, totally like the moon. So um, do some research and keep keep those things in mind. And it's a good idea to look at images on Flickr. Um, before you decide what type of film you get to, to get an idea of what it's going to look like. All right. So as far as gear is concerned, this is the most important thing. Most important part is the infrared filter. 
This is a 720 nanometer infrared filter. What does that mean? Um, Infrared filters, different types of infrared filters let in more or less visible light. Let's say the, the basic lowest infrared filter is a 590 nanometer. What that does is it allows a certain amount of visible light in as well as infrared. So when you take an image, it's a blend of both. Um, and that's, that's great for certain type of uh, applications. Um, the next step up is probably a 665 uh, nanometer filter that lets in little less visible light. This particular one I'm using here only lets in a very little bit of visible light. Um, so it's mostly an infrared look. But finally, the darkest uh, infrared filter um, you can get is about an 850 nanometer. It's so dark you really can't see through it. And um, it's going to give you the full blown infrared effect. Um, there's more to it, but I want to keep this video as simple as possible. So if you're going to start um, shooting infrared, most people start with the 720. That's like the baseline. It's a good balance of letting in an X amount of visible light versus um, infrared. And that way your uh, exposures aren't too long. The darker the filter, the longer your infrared exposure will be. Those are some things to keep in mind. This is my puppy, Teddy. He wants to be in the video. <laughs> All right, so the next image I want to show you is, look here. This is a historic boat builder site, kind of right in the middle of Miami. It's unusual that it's there. But look at the grass. In real life, that grass was green. The leaves on the tree, of course, were green. Um, but look how white it looks. It almost looked bone dry, like it can catch fire and burn up, but it wasn't. Um, and look at the house. You see that kind of glow? It looks like it's lit up. It looks like you woke up from a dream and you're like wondering, is this real? <laughs> this is one of my favorite images of all the ones I took. Um, so you can see really the kind of w images you could do if you have the right um, subject and setup and things like that. So yeah. Uh, so now let's get into the technical part on how to go about um, using the gear. All right. So here is probably the most technical part of infrared photography is how do you meter for it? How do you set the aperture and the shutter speed? The reason why is because a normal light meter doesn't measure infrared um, and you can't really see it. <laughs> so what I did, I did a lot of research before I attempted this and what I found is on a bright sunny day, um, if you shoot at one second at f8, that you, that's a good baseline to start at before you make your adjustments. And that's what I did um, with a 720 filter, one second at F8. Uh, the good thing about using F8 is you get a lot in focus. And um, that's, it's, you're mostly going to be doing landscapes probably. So having more in focus is really what you want because you're not going to use it for portraits. Um, another thing to understand is with focus, the focus is not in the same plane. If you look through here and focus it um, to your eye, it will look perfect. But the infrared light is slightly at a different plane. So most of these old lenses, these vintage lenses, have a red dot on them where you will slightly adjust focus. Once you get the visual focus, you then turn the lens a little bit to where that red mark is and then it will be in focus on the infrared. That's something very important. But because I'm shooting at f8 with such a wide depth of field, even if you're a little off, you may not even notice it. But um, that's something very important to keep in mind. And if you're doing infrared, you, you, I recommend using an old vintage lens with that infrared mark because new, new camera lenses um, don't really have that anymore. They kind of got, they got soft <laughs> to keep, to put it, to put it bluntly. So yeah, um, those are some things to keep in mind. Check this out. I'm going to show you something that people don't talk about, but it's very important. Okay, so this is the, the infrared filter, right? Let's say you're going to take a shot of a scene. You put on the filter. The filter is so dark, you can't see through it. 
So when you're looking through the finder, you don't see anything. You, you can't focus. So what do you do? You have to unscrew the filter, focus. When you get your focus right, then you put this back. Let's say you have a 36 exposure roll of film. You want to do that 36 times. You're going to get fingerprints on it. You're going to drop it. You probably might crack, crack it on, on the cement. You do not want to be putting this on and off for every image. It's a no, no. Um, so what a lot of people don't talk about is what you need is a filter holder like this where so you can flip it up. Do your focusing, composing and all that. When you're ready, you just fold it back down. You don't ever have to touch the lens or risk dropping it. Um, I'm going to put the specs on what this is. This is from a company called UU Rig. I'll put the specs up there, but it's very important to have that. And another reason I, I recommend screw on filters as opposed to the square ones is because sometimes the square ones allow light or sunlight to shine through the corners and it can reflect in there and kind of lose contrast and stuff. So I think the, the screw on is best um, for this type of thing. And it, you really need to be able to focus and put it on and off real quick. So uh, keep that in mind. Hey, check this out. I'm going to show you an interesting image and why it's important to hone your photography and light detecting skills. Look at this image here. This um, is a nature center near my house and it looks kind of bright here, but in reality it was very dark. Um, there was only sun peeking through. And then when I looked at this scene, I wanted to take it, but I said, wait a minute, I can't do one second at F8. It's too dark. How, how do I, I didn't know how to adjust the settings from that baseline. So based on my previous history of guessing exposure, shooting film, I looked at this and I said, you know what, let me do four seconds at 5.6. Just see what happens. And I kind of focused on um, halfway at the halfway point. You really don't want to focus at infinity in this kind of case because you want some of the, the foreground really in focus too. So yeah, I set the self timer and um, I'm shocked when I developed this film, the exposure was perfect. It couldn't have been better. It looks like some kind of fairy tale forest, man. It's crazy. This is probably my second best image on the roll. And um, it's rewarding when you're able to judge exposure like that. Um, but that kind of comes with time. But um, yeah, look at it. And, and again, the, the foliage was green, rich green. But it really shows how infrared light behaves differently in a way that um, we, can't, we can't see with our eyes, man. I really, I really love this photo. This is something interesting. When I'm shooting this, I'm thinking, what, what will I look like? What does a human skin look like? So I took a few images of myself with the infrared. So let's look at one right here. Look at this one here at, at the park. Man, look at my skin. I look like some kind of alien, like one of them aliens from the movie. It's Prometheus. Um, I don't like it. And the eyes, the pupil of the eyes, like almost black. Um, so I don't like shooting uh, people on infrared, um, for that particular reason. And, be, and when you're doing this type of photography, what most people will do is bracket, um, instead of one second, they may do a half a second, a one second, and then a two second. Um, that way you will, you'll see, you'll be wasting some film, of course, but you're going to see what's best for what situation. You may want to write that down for future reference and next time, um, you'll have better results. But um, that's one, they don't make infrared light meters. Um, so yes, at some point, uh, um, it's kind of a guess guesswork thing. But uh, that's kind of the fun of it. And when you get it right, um, it's very rewarding. If you had a camera that just figured it out for you and focused and did everything, then you, you're not really, you know, you can't really take credit. <laughs> the camera will be taking most of the credit, so yeah. Um, that most importantly is exposure is something that you kind of have to experiment with and learn and, um, and do some research like I did. That's how I was able to kind of, um, get a good head start.
All right, so that's my talk on black and white infrared film photography using Ilford SFX film. Um, I'm not a guru on this subject. I just did a lot of studying. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link below to where I went to research and get my information. That way you can read up on that also. Also going to put some links to the gear I use, such as this UU rig filter holder, um, where I got the 720 nanometer filter um, and the film. Um, yeah, check the links. Uh, definitely, it's a technical subject, so if, if I forgot to talk about something, um, definitely leave some questions below. But uh, hey, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. Keep in mind, though, no matter what film you use for your creative photography, maybe you're using digital. Um, until next time, as always, keep it real.